Hello, and welcome to the Demystifying Research Channel. In this video, we will discuss two of the newest gene editing techniques, namely, clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats, or CRISPR for short, and return library reconfiguring, or RLR. We are going to be discussing how they work, the differences between them, and whether one is better than the other. As for most gene editing techniques, CRISPR starts with identifying the gene or part of our DNA that needs editing. By the way, DNA is found in cells and contains instructions for how we are made. RNA is similar to DNA and it is in fact made from reading the DNA in a process called transcription, which we will describe later. There are a few differences between the two, but the basic one is that RNAs can come and go from the nucleus in our body, but DNAs cannot. The second step in CRISPR is making RNA. This RNA will act as a guide and stick to the portion of the DNA that we want to edit. In the third step, this RNA will join forces with an enzyme called Cas9. This enzyme can cut the DNA after the RNA takes it to the right spot. The first step can go one of three ways, based on what we want to do with the gene. If we want to kick the gene out, we cut out the area of the DNA that contains that gene and then make the two ends connect to each other. If the gene is not working because of a mistake in the arrangement of the DNA, we can cut the area and then the body's natural DNA repair system will correct the mistake. And finally, if we want to add in a new gene, we cut out a portion and introduce a new part of DNA and the body will take that part in in order to fix the broken DNA. In this figure, the light purple portion is the new gene that we want to add and the dark purple portion is meant to be similar to the original DNA so that it can be accepted into where the cut was made. Now, how does RLR work? Before we start, let's talk about a few other things. So, what even is recombinering? Recombinering is a method for gene editing in living cells. We can delete, knock out, or completely replace a gene, or we can make small mutations in the DNA. Recombinering can be done by using linear DNA, like those that we make through PCR, or single-stranded oligonucleotides. Side note, oligo means many, and nucleotides are the basic components of the DNA. In fact, the N in DNA and RNA stands for nucleic. So step one in recombinering is to make short DNA strands with a desired gene, which is the part in yellow in this picture. In step two, we insert many of these strands into the cell by using electricity to make the cell membrane accept them. Then these strands will attach to the DNA that is in the process of making a copy of itself to reproduce. So while it is doing that, it will also include the gene that we want to include in the new cells that will be made. As we briefly discussed earlier, transcription is the process of making a single stranded RNA by reading the DNA. Reverse transcription, as the name would suggest, is the opposite. It is the process of making DNA by reading RNA. So what are these retrons that we discuss when we talk about retron library recombinering? Retrons are genetic material that can undergo reverse transcription but only of a specific part, which is the colored part in the figure, and make a single strand of DNA or oligonucleotide. RLR works very similarly to recombinering. However, instead of inserting separate oligonucleotides, we now insert machines that can make them when we want them to. For the first step, we make retrons that in the reverse transcription portion include the genes we want to incorporate in the cell. This will be our retron library. Then, we insert them into the cell. For step 3, we can induce these retrons to undergo reverse transcription and produce many oligonucleotides. And then, as we saw in recombinering, these strands can attach to a replicating cell and be included in the DNA and its offspring. Now let's look at the major differences between CRISPR and RLR. RLR includes machinery for gene editing within the cell, while we have to do it all manually for CRISPR. We can include many, up to millions, of different new edits or analyses within the same process for RLR, whereas for CRISPR, that cannot be done on such a scale. However, we can still edit multiple locations on the DNA at the same time with CRISPR. However, RLR has not worked in a mammalian cell as of yet, but CRISPR has and is currently working to treat genetic conditions in humans. CRISPR can work at any time using the Cas9 enzyme and guide RNA. 
but RLR can only work for replicating cells. And lastly, RLR and other recombinating methods don't break the DNA while CRISPR does. Can we say that one method is better than the other? Well, not really. Each method includes its own benefits and pitfalls. While RLR can work faster, and does not need to cut the DNA to work, it cannot be used on humans or any other mammals like CRISPR can. Nevertheless, RLR has value. Gene editing in bacteria, such as adding antibiotic resistance, is crucial for making insulin, which can save many human lives. CRISPR, because of its ability to work on humans, is currently being used to treat different genetic diseases within the blood and even some cancers. Both methods are helpful in their own ways and can pave the way for further innovations. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section, and let us know which one you think is better. Thank you for taking your time to learn about the differences between CRISPR and RLR, and be sure to check out other videos from the Gamisifying Research Channel and our references down below.